So I bought a bunch of used batteries. These were essentially a dollar twenty. I don't know they were about a dollar each because I bought so many of them. But these look like so. When you unpack them like this, it's two batteries in series, seven seven point two volts at two point two five amp hour. I tested the actual cells, so I have a bunch of cells that have disassembled already. They're about 2,400 milliamp hours per cell. So they're over 100%, and these are non-cycled batteries. I got them for about 72 cents a cell, but I do have to take them apart. So when I take them apart, there's a couple things that I do. First, I have to make an incision on the top here um, with my Dremel. So I cut little holes here, and you have to be careful because the battery cell is sitting right here. So if I go too deep, I'm actually going to hit the battery cell. So it is a little, it's a, I mean, it's a dangerous process if you, if you don't know what you're doing. And then once that's done, I essentially just stick my screwdriver in here and twist, and that's going to pop the top off, and the top's going to pop off like so. And then from there, all I'm doing Since these are attached, I'm just gonna pull out. It's a little hard. Ugh. It actually pops out like that. Then you have, I mean, it's just sitting, sitting like that inside it. You got your cell, so I gotta clean it up. Check it out. So these are the cells that we pulled out from those little plastic things that I showed you. From these. And all the cells have been good. Every cell I've tested has been good. So. On Thursday, I'm going to get the rest of the spacers, then I'll put the spacers on, then I can start doing some welding. Well, we did it. We have all the batteries put together. We have 160 batteries in eight parallel. And the big thing we need to do is start to spot weld it. So we're going to cut a strip like this, and we're going to put this on the battery pack like so. What this is going to do is allow us to at attach everything together, and then we are going to use this piece on the end to attach the BMS sense wire. BMS sense wire goes here, and we're gonna do that all the way across the pack. Then we're gonna do the exact same thing to the other side, and we're gonna hang the BMS sense wire off the same side, whether we're on this side or the other side. And that is the plan, and that's how I intend to do this battery pack. So there's really nothing left to do but to start welding. You notice how that sparks right there? So you saw that spark that was kicking off of that nickel plated steel when I welded it. However, when you see me weld, weld this pure nickel strip, the blue wire will bounce right here, but there was no spark. That's because the pure nickel strip does not spark nearly as much. And that makes a difference because the nickel plated steel with the amount of power that I was doing to weld these, these nickel strips, they're either 0.12 or 0.15 millimeters thick. With the 0.12 millimeter thick nickel plated steel, I would blow through it and it would just break. So I had to go back and I had to tear off some of the nickel plated strips that I put on to this battery. And now I'm just using pure nickel. So I'm using a strip on the positive side, a strip on the negative side to make sure I'm connecting them in parallel. And then I'm taking two strips and putting them across, as you can see here. So I'm welding one strip on, and then I'm going to weld another strip on the battery pack right on top of it. All right, BMS time. So right now I'm going to be soldering up my sense wires to my battery management system or my BMS. A 72 volt system has two JST connectors that we're going to connect up and that's because of the amount of wires that we're connecting up I left all the wires the same length because someone on the internet said that it would mess with the voltage readings if I cut them down to size Now that I'm thinking about it I think I'm going to cut them down to size next time because I don't think that argument holds water anyway That's going to be for a future build I'm going to leave this as is and it's nice that I have space to put the fish tape in it so I'm going to solder up the sense wires and then I'm going to check the voltage of the battery pack to make sure that we're good to go. And then just tape it down. And then I'm going to dab a little bit of silicone on each one of these ends. They do have a little sharp piece on the end. I want to make sure that it's secure and not moving anywhere. And that even if there's vibration on this battery pack, that it's not going to cause an issue.
So I just want to make sure that everything's buttoned down nicely. And that's pretty much it for the BMS. I still am waiting on a few other things to come so I can finish up the battery pack itself, such as the charge and the discharge a connector, and then I'll solder that up. And that'll be just in a few days, but with the magic of editing, it'll be the very next thing you see. Okay, so we stood up the battery pack, and now we're putting the BMS on top of it. There is a sense wire that we're going to just glue gun onto the BMS. This is just going to be the temperature sensor for the BMS specifically. We don't really need to keep it on there uh, very tightly because we're going to be wrapping it in captain tape. We just want to make sure it sticks on the BMS. Now we're working on the negative side of the battery pack. We put some flux on it, and now we're putting some solder globs uh, in between the batteries. We really don't have enough for the current to flow nicely between the negative side because this is where our discharge leads are going to come off of. So I'm going to go ahead and put a piece of wire in between them. We have some, I think this is 12 gauge wire, just a copper rod that I'm putting all the way across it. And this is where I kind of figured, figured out that this particular soldering iron isn't really hot enough to do really big stuff. So 12 gauge, 10 gauge, 8 gauge, it doesn't really get hot enough for. So now I'm putting on the 12 gauge wire onto the negative side and just connecting it up to the negative side of the battery itself. Okay, the negative side is all soldered up and now we just need to connect the BMS sense wires to the BMS, which is what we're going to do now. And since it's a 20s BMS we have multiple JST connectors that we have to connect so that first one is like 1 through I don't know 13 or 14 and then we have another 6 to 8 uh, connections that we plug in on the other side so now we have all 20 connected looks good now we're working on the positive side this was a beast to solder up because I didn't have a soldering iron that got hot enough that could produce enough heat to actually solder it on there properly so I was able to get, get it on there, but it took a little bit of time. I had to pull out my old Weller soldering iron and solder it up. For 8 gauge wire or 10 gauge wire, it might be useful to get a soldering gun, one that can put a couple hundred watts into it really quickly for those larger um, cables. We have put on the positive and negative terminals for both charge and discharge. So, if you remember, we have a battery negative, which we connected. We put some 12 gauge wire over here to connect the negative together. And then we took two 12 gauge wires and we attached them in to this battery negative right here. It goes through the BMS and then we have our C minus. This is, I always thought of it as like charge negative, but think of it as like common negative both for charge and discharge, comes off of this side. So I was able to wire that up. I put some silicone on it, so nothing's gonna move around once we get it wrapped. But that's that. And then we just have our temperature sensor right here, which came with the BMS. And then we have all our sense wires, which are running down here. So our sense wires are all connected. We put a bunch of silicone on them, so they're not gonna move around. We got nothing's moving around in this battery at all. And that's it, that's as, Simple as it gets. Check this out. We have our charger, which is this cool uh, 10 amp charger that we got off of AliExpress. And it even has this really awesome percentage that tells you how charged it is. I really like that. Next steps. We've got our captain tape on it. We do have some fish tape that's potentially coming. Um, I wanted to put fish tape on it before I did the, the next layer, but the fish tape may be stuck in China. So <laughs> I don't think it's actually going to come because it got stuck in customs and it got sent back to China. So uh, we're, we just, we're just gonna be forging ahead without the fish tape and that's, that'll be fine. We got the battery ready to go. It has two layers of captain tape on it. It is fully sealed over here. We put some silicone as well on any of the, the spots where we're egressing outside of the battery. Now we just need to put some PVC shrink wrap on it and see how that goes. Now I'm not super familiar with PVC shrink wrap, so we're gonna have to see how well we can wrap this, but we're just gonna give it a shot. 
Oh, this is huge. I don't know if this is gonna actually fit or not. Well, we'll see. We'll start up from the bottom up and we'll see how far we can get and if we can actually wrap this or not. Um, we don't have a lot of space though. So we're just gonna wrap this side first. That wasn't too bad. Now we're gonna shrink it from the other direction. All right, here's the main one. I'm not quite sure what it's gonna do around here, but we're just gonna kind of give it a shot and see what happens. So when this, when this uh, cools down, it hardens. There you have it. There's our wrapped battery. Seventy two volts, 20 amp hours. It's ready to go. Now I'm probably not going to stick it on my bike just like this. I'm going to put some padding around it like this just to protect it just a little bit more. And I'm also going to waterproof this. So around here where I have these gaps, I'm going to put some silicone. So here, I'll put some more silicone around here just to kind of seal it in place. And I think I'll heat this up just a little bit, see if I can push that down a little bit more. So this was just sticking out, so I just applied a little heat to it and then pushed it against the end. That way I'll be able to put my silicone right there fairly easily. So I'll go ahead and do that now. So this is just some clear silicone, all-purpose silicone. It's great stuff. I love it. So we're just going to put a bead around this. Got a nice seal on that battery. Beautiful. And that's it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.